All right, what's up guys? It's Kostaf here and today we're gonna be going all the way back to when I had first arrived in Australia. I told a story of like my first day of school. This is probably gonna take place like three or four days afterwards. Or it's gonna start there at least. And it's about the time I just got caught in the most epically stupid lie. And I got caught in the worst way, like in front of the whole school. And it was just one of those things I just always wish I could take back. I wish if I could go back and redo something, that's what I would have done. And it's really stupid, but I'm gonna tell you about it. So back then skateboarding was like incredibly popular. Now I don't know if skateboarding's still as popular. Obviously, Obviously, I've fallen out of it. But back then, it was just huge. Everybody skated. Everyone wore skater clothing. Everyone had like a fancy new skateboard and everyone would go to skater parks. Everything was built around skateboarding. And at the time, this was something I had little to no experience with like at all. But I told everybody I was like, of course I skateboarded. I was like, not only a skateboarder, I was like a totally legit skateboarder. Like, I could grind handrails. I could do ridiculous grabs. I could ride half pipes. I was just the most bomb ass skater there ever existed. And I thought I'd get away with because it, it was only like the third or fourth day of school nobody brought their skateboards to school or if they did they never like rode them around there so I was like pretty much safe I was never really gonna be around a skateboard this was incredibly short-sighted and a terrible decision but mind you I am like 12 years old but nonetheless just a terrible move now if you knew me personally you would know I'm pretty much a terrible liar if I think I'm tricking like one of my friends or my family members I usually start to smile or grin or just give myself away or I'll just dive way too deep in the lie either way you'll always figure it out but to strangers to strangers I can always seem to get one over on them for the most part and I was in a sea of strangers at this point and they all kind of believed me I mean I talked a pretty good talk I knew the lingo because all my friends back before I moved were kind of getting into skateboarding and I had probably ridden a skateboard probably I don't know four or five times because I had a couple friends in middle school that rode them but I had fallen off of them every single time like I was really good at sports but balance on any kind of ski or snowboard or skateboard now I always learn because I always like force myself to learn those kinds of things because I know I'm terrible at them I always look at them as like little fucking mountains I've got to conquer. As you guys saw with the G Fuel Glider, I ride that thing all the time, but it did take me probably a little bit longer than the rest of the guys to kind of learn it, besides Sharp, because he's a baboon. But in general, I'm usually pretty terrible at those things. Now, of course, after a couple days of, like, telling everybody how great a skateboarder I was, and, I'm, and actually making a few friends, a lot of them wanted to meet up after school to go skateboarding, which I avoided the first couple times, but eventually I had to go, and we actually didn't end up skateboarding that time, so it was actually a huge relief. But lo and behold, the very next day, someone brought a skateboard to class. Now, all the attention wasn't immediately on me. They brought a skateboard to class, but everyone was kind of using it. And I noticed that nobody ever landed anything. They all tried to do these ridiculous tricks and ridiculous flips, and no one ever landed anything. No one even really got close to landing anything. So the and I thought, I'm saved. I could sit there and just never land anything and just attempt really hard tricks, and everyone will think I'm really good just because I'm attempting them. This was incredibly wrong. Now, at this point, all the kids are on top of, like, the picnic bench doing kick flips and ollies and different things like that on top of the table. Now they finally pressured me to get up there and give it a go, but I wasn't before I made this other ridiculous lie, and that was that I could only really skate on my skateboard. Now if you guys have ever moved overseas or ever known anybody that's moved overseas, all your shit takes a really long time to get there, especially if you have a whole house's worth of shit, which we did. So it all comes by boat and takes like two or three months to get there. So this was actually a pretty ingenious lie by saying I can only really skate on my specific skateboard, because I know it won't get here for two months, and hopefully by then I'll either have come clean or they'll just forgot that I'm Tony Hawk incarnate. But after telling them that whole story and everyone buying that surprisingly, they still urged me to get up there. And I figured, fuck, well, they never landed anything either. And what's the worst could happen? They could just try to do a 360 flip and everybody be like, whoa, whoa, but really the board will go flying away and I'll land safely back on the table and no one will be the wiser. This again, was very wrong. So I got up on the table, I'm standing on this board, which I was really wobbly getting on. So everyone around me is already just seriously questioning my authenticity. Everyone's like, uh, that's kind of suspect. But of course I wasn't paying attention to them. My world of focus was on this board and not falling off of it. So I moved my right foot back to like the lip or whatever. And I actually leaned down like I'm about to do the most ridiculous trick. And I've got the look down. I've stood on a skateboard more than once. So I know how to look like I'm about to do something fucking dope. And that's right when my memory goes black for about a minute. <laughs> So apparently, as soon as I thrust it upwards, the board came right out from under me and I fell smack dab on the picnic table and hit my head on the back of it. So the 20 or 30 kids that were all around having lunch, it all kind of gathered around me and I kind of came to like, fuck. 
And everyone's like, ah, you took a wicked spill, you took a wicked spill, and everyone's kind of just joshing me that I fucked up. And not really giving me a hard time about being a skateboarder, but I could see it in their eyes. They all knew. They all knew. And they started to pin little jokes here or there, but it was a really friendly group. I know kids can be really mean, but for some reason, because I was American and kind of knew, they weren't incredibly mean to me. It's either that or I'm just like deliriously oblivious and they all like talked a whole bunch of shit behind my back and never found out about it. But for the most part, I didn't really get it that bad. And I didn't see another skateboard for months. No one ever brought them to school. The few times I went and hung out with these kids, we always went over to their houses and didn't really do much. I mean, we're 12 years old, so we couldn't really go around the city and skateboard. And a couple times they did go to a skateboarding park. I just couldn't go because I had something else to do or something like that. So it was a pretty cool two months. I got to know like all the kids. They were like an extremely close group of like individuals because they all live so close to each other. They're like cool leader, you know, the blonde kid that like has all the nicest toys and you know, dates all the prettiest girls and all that stuff. Basically like the big man on campus, which is funny to say because it was in middle school. His name was Andy and he actually lived right across the street from me and he had a pool and he was just like always around. So I hung out with him like all the time. But him living across the street is really important because when all the trucks came to bring all our shit, well, he was there to notice that. So two months came around. I was actually really stoked because the only shit we had was the stuff we brought with us on the plane. So we had like a couple duffel bags worth of clothes and maybe a suitcase. So really nothing. And I'm 12 years old. So I don't have like my toys and shit. I don't have any of my Star Wars ships and all those different things I used to play with. Yeah, I was a nerdy kid. So all that shit arrived and I was actually really stoked. I like set up my room. I put everything on display. I had all my shit back the way I wanted it. Totally awesome day. Everyone was like in a really good mood because it was basically Christmas and everyone was like unpacking all these boxes and everyone got to set up all their shit. And then I got a call from Andy say, hey, bud, you should come over and bring your skateboard. And of course, I instantly bullshitted my way out of that because all my shit just got there, even though I was already done. And I really wanted to go hang out with him. So I told him a whole bunch of mess, like I had a whole bunch of stuff to do, blah, 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 blah. But he called back like a half an hour later. and I said, fuck it, come over with another ingenious lie of saying that my skateboard hadn't been unpacked yet. So we ended up throwing my connect cars like off this huge driveway, like veranda I used to have at that house. So it was basically like a 12 foot drop into our like front yard from like where we would park our cars and we would just throw these cars off and it was pretty cool because it would smash everywhere. So that lasted like another 12 hours and then I had to go to school and of course everyone was talking about how my shit had just gotten there and they all wanted to kind of come over. And they definitely wanted to see me skate on my board because I had added on to this lie at this point. Not only was I only good on this board, but this board was special. This thing had magical powers. It was extra grippy. It bent in a certain way so that I could grind handrails just perfectly. It was thin. It was glowing. It was so powerful and it was so powerful that I was like the silver surfer. I was only good when I was on that board. So everyone was going over to Andy's house later that day and everyone had told me to go get my skateboard because I lived right across the street from Andy so there's just no way I could avoid that. I said yeah no problem you know I hung out with him every other day so it was like no big deal. So I got home with this dilemma of one you know not being a really good skateboarder and they're gonna expect some mad skills and two not having a skateboard at all. Not only was I not a skater I didn't really own a skateboard the one I did have was a piece of shit that I had like spray painted all over so I just threw it away when we moved. So I just didn't end up going over to his house that afternoon and they had called a few times and even came by the house and I had my parents tell them I wasn't feeling well and it was pretty fucking terrible. So I basically hid in my house that afternoon but the very next day was Andy's like birthday so he was having the whole school over to his house the very next afternoon when well there was just no bullshitting my way out of that so of course I went to the party and they were like oh get your board go get your board and I just refused to do it said nah man nah man and played it kind of cool and stuff like that and they all knew I was full of shit and couldn't skateboard and I had to bear the weight of that for like like pretty much my entire year there. But believe it or not, two weeks later, you know, everyone kind of forgot about it because something else had happened or someone else fucked up or someone else did something totally retarded. And I ended up having some really great friendships at that school. It was actually some of my fondest memories. We ended up going to this like mountain retreat camp or something for a week for the whole school. And it was like fucking awesome. And I can't wait to tell you about that. But just overall, save like one moment, my entire educational experience in Australia was just fucking tits. Literally the coolest shit I could ever describe. And I can't wait to tell you all about it. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.